Hi, today I'm going to show you a fast and easy way to take a purchase table and turn it into a one-of-a-kind item by making a custom resin tabletop. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today is this little table that I bought on Amazon for $45. It's solid wood, it's easy to assemble, and it comes with a solid wood tabletop. So then what I did is I took these art cards that my son bought me at a game convention. These are Mass Effect. I'm going to put the artist information for these in the description of the video because I really love these cards. I think they're great. And I wanted to do something special with them. So if you've been watching my videos, you know I like laser cutters. So I laid this out on Adobe Illustrator and cut it on a laser cutter, but that is totally not required for this project. You just need a way to cut a frame that keeps the resin from uh, rolling over the sides when you pour it in. And uh, I had a 16th inch layer that I put inside the frame that had the whole cutouts for the, the cards and a little bit of engraved design, but you don't need to do that. You can just glue them in place and pour the resin over. Um, I used cards, but you could use um, duplicate magic cards. You could use cards from any of your favorite card games. You could use favorite photos um, because when the resin dries, it makes a very hard surface that makes a very usable and unique tabletop. So I'll talk about how to do this in this episode. This illustrator drawing is really pretty simple. I have one reference and that is the card. This is the size and shape of one of my art cards. And then I create another layer and I put on the cut lines for the frame. The outside is the size of the tabletop, and the inside is one inch uh, in from each of the four sides. That frame is going to be cut out of quarter inch plywood. The inlay is cut out of the sixteenth inch. It's a little bit smaller than the inside of the frame. You can see it just barely fits inside of it. And each one of these card shapes is just barely larger than the card reference, so that I'm sure that everything will fit. And I laid it out, uh, got in the most number of cards I could in the available space. I thought it would be nice to engrave some simple design in the open areas, and I had this star field that I created for a prior project on Paragon and Renegade edgelet acrylic. So I pulled that in, put it underneath the inlay layer, and used the Pathfinder tool to basically cut out those top shapes. So I could have had it just engrave everything and then cut out later, but it's more efficient if you do this step and uh, eliminate the engraving that will be cut away. I have to import this drawing into RDWorks, which is the CAM software that drives my laser cutter. And here the laser cutter is, uh, it's already done the engraving in a first pass, and now it's doing the cutting. I do a little bit of sanding and uh, use some wipe-on poly on the top frame. I use a good wood glue then to really put a lot of glue on that and clamp it down because you want a very tight seal here so the resin doesn't escape. Before it's fully dry, I can do the same thing with the inlay layer and put that down and let that dry. My card pattern is predetermined, but I have to decide which cards go where and which way they're oriented, and then I glue them all in place. I bought this art resin on Amazon for $59. You mix it 50-50, half resin, half hardener, and this is uh, 32 ounces. You should have a pin tool nearby to get little hairs out. You need a stir stick and you need some heat source. I'm using a heat gun in this uh, particular project. And then I have a bunch of these disposable mixing cups that have the measurements on it. And to test the volume I'm gonna need, I got a cookie sheet that was about the size of my tabletop. And one full cup is not enough to even cover the bottom of the sheet. Two full cups gives me the 3 16 inch that I'm looking for. So I determine I need two cups, and here's why I really made a mistake. Because I mixed them in these two, and I should have just picked one disposable container and uh, used the measuring cups to measure, but only had one thing to stir, because what I found out when I poured 
is that one of those two cups I had not stirred long enough. You're supposed to stir for four minutes uh, and you need all four of those minutes. It looks fine right now, but the next step is to use a heat gun or, or a torch, but I thought a heat gun is better given the wood. And as bubbles rise to the surface, you break them with the heat. And I'm using a bright light to make it easier to see the bubbles. You're supposed to be able to do this for a half hour, but I found out that one corner of the table set up faster than the rest. When you're done, you cover it with a box and you let it sit for at least 24 hours to cure. So here's that corner that I said set up prematurely. You can see there's a, a lot of little white bubbles there at the top. This other side looks much better and that's why I think that I didn't really have one of those cups mixed adequately. But you know what? It still looks pretty darn good. Um, I really love these cards and I love how they're showcased in this tabletop. I have a lot of other great projects I'm working on for gaming and gamers, so please subscribe to my channel.